There are millions of different types of CPUs out there, but from Intel there are really only three main categories for gamers, the i3, the i5, and the i7. So which one's right for you? Here's a chart of some key characteristics between two i3 CPUs, one i5, and one i7. So for starters, we can see the i3 only has two CPU cores. Now that'll be enough for most games, but it won't be good enough for things like The Witcher 3 and 1080p. But you can also see that it has four threads. Now if you want me to go more in depth about what CPU threads are, you can go ahead and drop a like on this video. Now when Intel says a CPU has four threads, it just means that it's a two core CPU with more intelligent scheduling to nearly double performance, so it almost acts like it has four cores or four threats. It's misleading because it actually doesn't perform like a four core CPU, but it definitely performs better than just a two core CPU without hyper threading. We can also see that the i3 has three megabytes of L3 cache. Now you can find i3s with up to four megabytes of cache, but four is really where it stops. If you want me to make a video about what L3 cache is, then go ahead and leave a like and or a comment. Now cache is basically just RAM that's closer to the CPU because it's inside the CPU, and that can be accessed more quickly, so it holds the most frequently accessed data. So having more of this means that you can store more stuff for quick access, which is obviously good for performance. Now moving on to the i5, we see that it has four CPU cores. Now these are physical cores. It also says that the i5 has four threads. This is because the i5 doesn't have hyperthreading, so no intelligent scheduling or anything fancy here. Just four physical cores. This means that you'll have better performance than the i3 because while the i3 has two real cores and two fake cores, the i5 trades in those fake cores for real ones. We also get a two megabyte increase in L3 cache for a total of six. Now I have an i5 in my system, and from personal experience I can tell you that it's really hard to find a game that you can't play in 1080p. So I have a lot of videos on my channel that show me showing off the i5 playing games like GTA 5 or the new Star Wars game that just came out, and you can go ahead and check those out and see what kind of frame rates I'm getting if that's going to help you decide. So what happens if you have four real cores and then hyperthreading for four more fake cores? That is the i7. So you can imagine the performance that this monster has with a total of eight cores. Now this isn't where it stops though. No, that's just the base i7, for the most part. You can get all the way up to the Intel Core i7 Extreme Edition, which has 10 physical cores and then 20 threads because it has hyperthreading, with 25 megabytes of L3 cache. It also costs $1,600, but if you really want the best, then there it is. Now if you've done some research, then you must know about clock speed. Now clock speed is helpful to compare CPUs in the same line. So an i3 with a clock speed of 3.5 GHz should outperform an i3 with a clock speed of 3.0 GHz. But it isn't good to compare them across series. So don't think that a 3.3 GHz i3 is going to outperform a 3 GHz i5, because it probably isn't. So these are some basic differences between the i3, i5, and i7. Now there's obviously a lot more I could talk about, like PCI lanes and all those things, but they usually won't affect the average user. I try to keep this video a little bit basic, so please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohadeen, and I will catch you guys later.